it out here, you can change things. You can move things around in your scene. You can manipulate the locations of pieces and say, aha, I really want this to be over here. <clears throat> move stuff around. My game window is still going. Things have moved. And then when we're done, things get reset. So you can have your game running and be tinkering as a little puppet master, moving your game around, saying, no, it should really be there. But don't forget, as soon as you stop it and, and make the game finish running, everything will be reset back to the beginning. So if you do want to make changes, either remember what you're doing and write it down somewhere, or make sure you're doing them when the game is not running. So that's what I just did. I said, aha, I want to pick a new color, but I did it while the game was running. And it didn't save. So, here are my objects in the world. They look pretty bad. There's no lights. I can add lights. It's another game object. Let's make a light. It's a couple kind of lights. The one we'll learn about today is a directional light. Directional light is, in essence, the sun. Infinitely far away light that shines on everything in the same direction. It's a game object, so we could pick it up, move it around. We could rotate it and say, nope, that light is coming from over here. The light's coming from over there. It changes it in our scene, but more importantly, it changes it in our game when we play it. We could actually see these objects and they have light reflected off of them. There's so much going behind the scenes with ray tracing and computer graphics to make all this happen but we can actually have a game that does what we want. Pause that. Let's, let's rotate this camera just a little bit. Move my camera, make sure things are still in there. There we go. These are the objects that are in my scene. So this comes together, you can do a lot with just that amount of knowledge. You can create a whole background, you can create your cities, you can create the platforms, you can create what you want inside the game by dragging over objects, assembling them. This is the designer's job. Game designer says, here's my level, here's what's going on in my game, here are the objects and what's important. This is what happens with them. Manipulating, putting the camera in the right spot, putting the lights in the right spot, making sure that the visual atmosphere of the game is working well. So let's get some experience with that, making some kind of hierarchy. Yeah, we've got the lights, we've got the cameras, we can have action now. So we'll get to action in just a second. So I would need you to work through making these objects. I'd like you to make a hierarchy that is a, a robot, just a cartoon robot. But you can use cubes, you can use spheres and capsules, spend some time dragging them over into the scene, putting them into a hierarchy, an empty game object to start, and then try to organize it like you might. This is my head, this is my body, this is my torso, these are my legs. And then within the legs, you have some feet and other stuff to make your hierarchy a bit more interesting. It helps you understand how the transforms work and just understand these pieces and manipulating and using the tools in Unity. So let's spend a few minutes having you make some object in Unity that we could then manipulate and use. Okay. So, got Unity.
I mean, you can do it up here, but watch where you uh, click. Yeah. Make sure you get a duck. Okay. It's a it's a service, so it's just running a piano. Okay. Nice. And then add stuff to They're showing you how to make this one. What, that game? Yeah. It's like a tutorial video. I want to get to the two. I like 3D. I like 3D games, though. Okay, yes, that's what it was. Right clicking lets you do fly by mode, move around. Yes, these, yep. If you right click on it, then you want to check, like it should say like bottom or right, you want to switch it back to free. Nice. So you click on it, it's like, I need to see that. But if you right click on it, free gets it off of those particular angles. Okay, whoa, I'm pretty far away. Here we go. And Unity development is better if you have multiple screens. Like three. Three would be good. Yes. Because the way you want to do it is have one window devoted to your game, one window devoted to development, and probably one window devoted to debugging and checkpointing and all that other stuff. One window with the internet open so you can browse and find sprites, find other things, read the tutorials when things go wrong. But in class, we will cram it all into one little screen because that's all we have.
Okay, this is going well. You are making things go up. Okay, let's put some things together here. Again, I lost everything. So my game was playing. <laughs> yes. I don't know how to do that. I'm just going to figure out my This one's out here. 